Good evening. Zach the Gunsmith at Black Forge Armory. Tonight I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, going over stock architecture. Specifically, we're finishing up this pattern for a customer. Um, they did most of the work, but there's a little bit of shaping that we're going to. Chris Bobos of the stock has good sharp lines and is pretty petite. And this area is just a little heavy. Um, I'm not going to sharpen the comb much, but I'm going to change this transition from a super convex shape and uh, slim it down and sharpen the nose of the comb a little bit. Um, for doing this sort of area on a stock, I use just uh, rat tail files, uh, traditional Nicholson 50. I also have this Japanese carving file that has a tapered shape and a compound radius on it. Works really slick for doing these shapes. And this is primarily what I'm gonna use. Sharp, makes really good clean cuts. Um, it doesn't hurt to kind of draw in your shape of where you're gonna cut, um, especially if it's not real solid in your mind. But I'm just gonna go to town. So while I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep the shape of the wrist flowing down through the toe line. Um, I don't wanna work down into that too much. I wanna keep that Def a defined shape, it won't have a sharp edge, but there will be a noticeable transition there. And I can change by where I'm using my file, um, sort of the shape that I'm getting there. And as I work towards the toe line, I'll use closer out to the end for the smaller radius. Although in general you shouldn't draw back on a file or rasp while you're using it. Um, a lot of times I will float it backwards because I feel like it gives me more control and it does reduce the life of the tools a little bit. Um, but I can work a little bit faster and make up the difference. So I think here you can see that I've cut the flute. It doesn't have a sharp line like a lot of flutes on rifles that you see. And this will be sanded out and blended in. So what line you do see will kind of fade out. From here, you can kind of see the changing to that concave shape of the flute as opposed to this as improved the overall shape and matched more with the rest of the look of the gun. Although I eyeballed this side to a proper shape, I will make some rough marks on this side to get it close without having to switch it back and forth in the vise. And uh, <clears throat> I just use either white or yellow marking pencils uh, for most of this. I could use pencil or even Sharpie since it's just a pattern, 
but I always have these laying around. And uh, okay. for this, I'm really just going to kind of define my outside edge. The lower edge on this side is going to be defined by the cheek piece a little bit. The upper, the upper shape is the one that we're going to most closely follow from side to side. And I'm gonna redefine my center line. So you can see, just a quick sketch. And again, I'll kind of finalize that out just by feel. Here you can kind of see me using the tighter radius here for at the bottom of the transition. And then as I'm working up into here, moving back into the more open radius. At this point here, um, this could be a lot sharper. I'm not going to take it all the way though, since this is going to be used as a pattern and it could be a little bit delicate. So to avoid this tearing out on the pantograph, I'll leave it a little heavy. So it just needs to be gone over um, just a little bit on the final product. One of the other tools I use, this is just a small Nicholson half round bastard. And uh, I'll use this to kind of feather in these edges a little bit. Might need to come a little bit higher on this side. I just was brushing against the line that I put on. The bottom side's pretty good and my depth is about right. Um, no, I think I just need to break it over a little bit. There's just a little bit sharp, sharp transition yet. Um, and I need to work on my transition into the wrist on the other side. Now you can see we've cleaned up those shapes a little bit. That's a lot more slender looking. And we haven't really affected the area where the cheek will be actually laying on, on the gun. During the final shaping of the actual stock, 
this will be taken down to fully sharp instead of that little, you can see a little bit of gloss, the eighth inch flat through there. And from just off of the roll of the nose here, this will be sharp. It'll actually come to a slight point and then that shape will follow all the way down into the wrist about here it'll it'll fade out it'll be very blunt but it'll still come up into into that sharp shape and then the wrist it's kind of hard to to see the wrist on this will have an egg shape right through here right in front of the nose and then it transitions to oval um, to keep it as slender as possible at the uh, the rear of the locks behind the lock panels. I would say the the customer did pretty good at laying this out. Um, like I said, it wasn't wasn't a lot, just a little bit to uh, clean up clean up these shapes, but that should make a pretty nice custom gun. If you have any questions about this video or ideas about what our next video should be, please get a hold of me on my Instagram at Zach the Gunsmith. Comment below, or you can get a hold of us through our Facebook page at Black Forge Armory. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.